Hi everyone, welcome to the KWOPS channel. I'm Rafael Lima and today we're going to be talking about cucumber hooks, right? So and this is going to be very important because uh, we're going to be using these for the, uh, for uh, a lot of the scenarios that we, we need to, we're going to be creating. And you're going, you, you probably notice that I'm, I'm creating the infrastructure and I'm creating the, the backbone and the setup necessary for us to evolve our, our application, our tests. And this is very important because uh, I want to start writing in, in a way that's going to be easier for us and not do a bunch of coding that's going to be, have a lot of duplication and then have to refactor everything. So I, I rather go with everything that I already learned uh, in my, my years of experience. All right. So uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell so you can receive the notification. I'll be posting the videos for the for the, I'm, I'll be posting the links for the previous videos and let's start, right? As I said, we're going to be talking about cucumber hooks. We already have some tags and hooks I used uh, based on tags. Uh, I'm going to be posting the videos for how we set up these tags and wh what, what, uh, what they are for. Uh, but in cucumber, we're going to be using those also in our scenarios, right? So I'm going to create a tag here. I'm not going to say call first. Right, and uh, if we look at our cucumber runner, this is not here in the tags that's not going to be run. So this is going to be used for other purpose. We're going to come here in steps and config, and I'm going to create a annotation called before. It needs to be the cucumber before, not J, J unit. I'm going to say that this is a public void. And I'm going to say before, uh, do something. And uh, if you are on Eclipse, it's going to be sys out for you to do a system out print align. Uh, if you are on IntelliJ, it's going to be s out, enter, and you already have the system out print align, print line. Uh, and I'm going to say, I don't know, uh, Hook before, right? Cool. And I'm going to run all my tests. I'm going to run my uh, cucumber tests. You're going to see that it executed the before twice. The first test, hook before, and the second test, hook before, right? Great. So now this is a generic before. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to say before again, but now I'm going to say before uh, do first. And I'm going to say that it's going to be a, uh, a print line on the first tag. All right, so this is uh, before first. I'm going to rerun everything, but this was going to happen is going to execute in the order that was displayed. You're going to see that hook before, before first, hook before, before first. But now what I'm going to say, this before is going to run only on the tag first. And I'm going to rerun everything. You're going to see that it's going to be hook before, before first, because this has the tag first. And the other one only hook before it does not have the tag, right? So I'm going to create two extra ones here, and I'm going to call it. This is going to be second before second, and before and third and third, right? And this also needs to change to second. And this also needs to change to third. And I'm going to give it second and third. I'm going to rerun everything, right? What's going to happen is going to the the ones that have everything is going to be with everything, hook before, before first, before second, before third, and the other one just hook before, right? So I'm going to be using only the English one as an example. So I'm going to execute this one and I'm going to ignore the other one because I don't care anymore. Uh, so before first, before second. So this is on the order of the file, right? 
on the order that the, the, the methods are displayed on the file. We can change that order though. What we can do is we can say, hey, now I want to change the order. So I just type order, enter, and now insert the value for me because now the, the value, the, the, the value of the tags before in the order, order is one. So I'm going to say order and I'm going to say two. And I'm going to say order, uh, not here, outside, and I'm going to say three. What's going to happen? It is going to run run one, two, three, and this one last because this does not have the order, so it's going to be treated as the last one. So I'm going to rerun everything. So now you're going to see you have before third, before second, before first, and hook before. Right? Awesome. We can also do after right so uh one of the things before we talk about the after i can say that this is also one so when i put the same order is going to uh go back to displaying the to executing the method on the order that it was displayed so this is going to be the first the second the third and the last one so if i execute here it's going to be before second, before third, before first, and hook before, right? I'm going to come back here to make it easier for us. Right, so now I can do a bef uh, after. So this is a something that's going to be executed before, and also I can do something that's going to be executed after the my method. So I'm going to duplicate here everything, And I'm going to remove this, and this is going to be after. So uh, Control G to mark all the ones that I wanted. I need to import this. I need to import the cucumber one, not the J unit. And now I need to remove the the, the the method name. So this is going to be do last, do last two. No, no creativity now. Do last three, right? And the tags are the same because one is going to be executed before and the other one is going to be executed after. So, but there's a tricky thing here. The order of the before is incremental from one to the last one, from one, two, and three. The order of the after is not very intuitive. It's from the last one to the first. So, uh, what's going to happen here is is going to execute uh, if I do one, two, and three, it's going to execute this first, then this one, and then this one. Right, so let's let's check it out. I'm going to be ignoring the before because the before was exactly the, the ones that we, we we already changed, right? So it's third, second, and first. And this one is going to and then the, the hook before. And now that comes the sorry, this should not be before, it should be after, because otherwise it's going to confuse us. Uh, so yeah, so after the hook comes the before. So we have before first, uh, which is the third one, then before after after sorry, after first, after second, after third. Right? So it, it goes from the order, uh, uh, decremental order. All right, so interesting now, one thing that we can do is I can come here and I can say, this is going to be the third one. So the first thing that you might think is, okay, so now it's going to execute first this one and then this one and then this one last. But no, it's also increment, decremental in the order that it was displayed. So it's going to be this one first, then this one, then this one, which is not very intuitive. Right, so we're going to see it's going to be executing after second, then after first, and then after third. Right, so this is, as I said again, this is not very intuitive, it's kind of confusing. Uh, but that's it, folks, that's what I wanted to show you. Uh, thank you for watching. Oh, sorry, one of the things that's very important, uh, before I close it up is that, um, so this knowledge is very important because. Uh, our test should be able to clean after itself, right? Uh, when I create a user, when I when I create, I do a test that creates a user. I cannot rerun that same test if I do not delete the user. Otherwise, it's going to say user already created. 
and uh, unless you want to actually test if it's it's uh, blocking you from creating the same user. But if you just want to keep testing if you are able to create a user, you need to delete the user afterwards. Otherwise, your test is going to fail, right? And uh, your test should be, should should uh, be able to clean after itself, right? So uh, some folks like uh, say that another test can clean it up, but I don't believe in uh, the literature. Uh, a lot of other folks believe in, uh, uh, in the same way that a test should clean after itself. So if my test creates a user, that same test needs to delete any trash that it created, not another test. It's not the other test's responsibility, right? So, and this is going to be huge for us. We're going to be uh, doing this uh, a lot. And uh, although in our pet store, in our Swagger pet store, uh, I can create a user, uh, the same user with the same information over and over and over and over again. It does not complain, but I mean, I cannot complain much because it's for free. Uh, we are able to use it to train it. Uh, but in a real life, that would not be possible. And that's what um, I'm trying to show you here. What you're going to be expecting from the real life application, from real life application, right? So thank you for watching this far. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell to receive not the notifications of my next videos. Uh, give the thumbs up if you liked. And uh, I do request that you do really give the thumbs up. This way, uh, YouTube is going to promote my channel to other folks that needs and also going to help me uh, increase my, my channel as well. All right. Thank you. And I see you on the next video.